Welcome to SelfDiscoveryMedia.com, where we discover the communities that are making a difference in the lives of others. Our self-discovery is something we are all making on our life's journey. Here you will find the people that will be your guidance, that will be your inspiration, that will be there for you in support on your journey of life. Do enjoy. Our next show is... Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of Self-Discovery Mediums right here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. I'm your host, Sarah Troy, and I'm going to try and get my guest name right. It is Teria Simonson. I hope I have pronounced that correctly. He is a philosophy oh, yeah. of the paranormal. So we are going to dive into a wonderful, wondrous world that I live in, that I enjoy so much, but I know that it's still something that's very new to a lot of people. The philosophy of the paranormal goes back to ancient times. He discusses his research, the philosophy of the paranormal, um, his notes, while there is nearly 150 years of scientific research in parapsychology, the field is still marginalized within the academia. And also we're going to talk about the responses of the paranormal within the field of theoretic physics. He focuses on the practical applications of PSI and on the a personal meaning of his abilities. So we're going to dive right into this. It is absolutely my kind of topic. I absolutely love it. First and foremost, for people that might be kind of new to this, they've heard about the paranormal, they've seen the TV shows, but what really is the paranormal? So people can truly understand, you know, it's not a sci-fi movie. <laughs> there is something a lot deeper than that. Welcome to the show, love. Thanks a lot uh, for having me. Uh, should I just start on commenting your first question? Please do. Well, uh, the paranormal uh, para is a uh, prefix means uh, besides. So it's what is say beside the normal uh, psychology then. Uh, and uh, uh, I am not much into this ghost story things uh, and that aspect of the paranormal. But I don't have anything about uh, against ghosts and I don't think they have anything against me either. But uh, my, my focus is uh, just as the name of the channel, uh, your channel uh, uh, indicates, it's about more of self-discovery yes. that we ourselves have those extended abilities that is uh, often thought to be uh, say, uh, what is supernatural in a way. Yeah. Uh, it's paranormal uh, insofar uh, it's uh, extended of the normal academic uh, psychology, uh, but it, still it's not supernatural, it, it being that you have to be some kind of specially gifted guru or something to enjoy being in contact with that, say, register of your own psyche. Mm. The register of our own psyche is really opening up to the universal energy, isn't it? It's kind of channeling and tapping into that, that wisdom that can mm. guide us so it's i kind of refer to it as the knowingness uh knowing what you need to know when you need to know it it's it's just something that comes through you of understanding understanding all the well not understanding but um allowing the knowledge mm. of all the different type of dimensions and um, and that we are so many more layers than just the human body in this human realm Mm. Uh, I use uh, the concept or in introduce the concept of the, the mental internet. Uh, it is like, um, say, uh, the consciousness is not a thing just inside my head or inside mm -hmm. your head, but it's a kind of a worldwide web of consciousness yes. connecting us all together. So that is a, a metaphor that I have found to be useful for that. And some people have a more, say, a more excellent uh, search engine on that uh, mental internet, uh, but we can all, uh, say, develop and train ourselves to become more, say, uh, sensitive and aware of what's going on in this collective sphere. And that could be very helpful uh, to, to, in practical uh, aspects, if, if you are applying to a job, for instance, or should I hang out with these people and so. So, so to become aware that consciousness is a collective phenomenon and that you somehow can help you to, to develop uh, your potentials, I think it's very fruitful uh, uh, aspects of, of, of this, uh, say, kind of extended view on, on psychology. 
Yeah, I love the terminology, kind of your own internet. You could be your own Google. <laughs> you yes, know, it's, you exactly. Know, you know, it's exactly. That's what I call the knowingness is that yes. I don't need to know it all. But when mm. I need to know something, I just open up the yes. channel. And what mm. I need to know in that moment that is relevant to that moment, I will know. Mm. And I won't need to validate it, verify it, justify it. It just is. Mm. But you might have to, say, practice before you get that kind of certainty yeah. in dealing with this, uh, say, register. Yeah, I mean, it's, for me, it's been something that's been a state of being all my life. Um, yes. But for many people, it is an awakening mm. right now. And it's like they're not quite sure what's tapping them on the shoulder. And because the media likes to sensationalize things, and of course, you know, when you look at the supernatural, you're looking at, you know, or anything to do with the paranormal, they, they make a scary movie out of it. Yes. Um, or it, it's a cult, right? Mm. So it's always mm. looking to the negative of it, not the positive mm. of it. That exactly. so many people are scared of these feelings mm. that are having this consciousness that's awakening inside mm. of them. But there's nothing to fear if you are open in the heart. Mm. No, I also think uh, that is a very is a good approach to it. Thing, it's our uh, birthright and our. Uh, human heritage to to use this uh, and but, but sometimes we are like little children in that aspect that that we project monsters uh, <laughs> under our beds and such things because we don't know these spheres we take all say our fears and project them into this sphere which is basically if you have the right attitude it's a very helpful and uh, say beautiful extension of your normal day-to-day -day consciousness so so I, i'm not very happy about the, the media in this respect because somehow uh, that can scare people away and or, or give them a for instance a friend of mine he's been much into demons and that kind of things mm. you know and uh, that has scared him uh, he liked my book quite a lot uh, because that gives him a much more upbeat feeling towards this but you have to work on yourself of course because you have uh, if you have some kind of uh, guru tendencies or want to dominate people and that's the kind of things of course then also the paranormal will be say used for negative in 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 your life so oh, yeah. you have to check on uh, it's what the buddha said intention 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 you have to check on your intention what uh, what do you want with this expansion of consciousness but if you have the good intention i th don't think there is anything to fear mm. um the media of course you know it's all about numbers it's all about profit so it, you know we know that fear sells it's mm. also a form of control. Let's keep mm -hmm. the masses in control. And we, we, we sell them fear so that they're not going to be explorers of their own consciousness, of their, of the, their you know, the divine possibilities. Um, but you mentioned, you know, as I mentioned in your, in your bio there, the academia. You know, um, I once had somebody who was quite a scientist and um, he was talking about frequency and this and that. And, you know, as I pointed out to him, I said, those that are spiritual, Mm. are living on a higher frequency, mm. on a higher hertz, higher vibration. Mm. Mm. And he said, oh, now that makes sense, mm -hmm. right? Because when mm. you put it like that, then he understood the science behind spirituality. It's mm. a heightened sense of vibration, a heightened sense of, of frequency. It is a stepping into a place of love. And when you have the love intent, mm. you cannot feed knowingly anything wrong uh, I, I agree with that perspective yes it's how do we get other people to see that without the fear that's the question <laughs> yes <laughs> because who's on the tv and who's making the movies you know it's a, mm. it is conversations like this and the reason why we do them to to show people that you know it's um it is okay and i've i've gone through the experience where i was dabbling too much without protection and kind of got body mm -hmm. snatched and uh, it wasn't a very pleasant experience and um i've been at the low ebb of life you know where um it wasn't a question of intent it was my heart was shut down so lots mm -hmm. of things mm -hmm. happen yes. i really do believe that <clears throat> the divine the source the energy whichever you wish to call it cannot speak to your your head so to speak unless mm. you have an open heart Mm. 
No, I, I think it's a very uh, important aspect you say that there's many, you know, there are also different personality types. Mm -hmm. Some are, uh, are very, say, facts uh, uh, oriented, uh, others are more, um, say, artistic and uh, emotionally orientated. So somehow the different spiritual traditions have different uh, ways to develop, say, spirituality, uh, because what you say makes sense to me, but uh, there might be a typical facts guy that that would not be his way of dealing with that. Uh, he perhaps would start uh, studying psychology for two or three years and then starting meditation and then starting to also emotionally open up. So we have different ways to 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 yeah. say th these extended perspectives on life. Well, that's the personality traits. I yes. mean, there are four key but very strong personality traits. What that trait is, is how you're going to receive and perceive information. Mm -hmm. And, you know, some people need the data. Uh, mm -hmm. I need to know the facts. So, you know, how mm -hmm. did you, how do you know, how do you come about this? You know, and they want to know the how, 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 mm -hmm. um, you know, others, uh, what can I do with this? Maybe how can I profit exactly. from it? Mm -hmm. Others are like, show me the way I'm ready to immerse in it. And mm -hmm. others may be a little more fearful because of pretty well the, the fake view that's been out there on it, that mm -hmm. they're scared because either religion has told them it's wrong or mm. the media and the movies has made it scary. So mm. we have to know whom we're talking to if we want to have them open up their mind to receive and look at things in a different way. Exactly. Uh, uh, may I ask, uh, I did, don't know if, uh, did you uh, present the title of my book? Yes, I did, but I'm going to present it. Well, why don't you tell us right now? I said yeah, it right okay, at the beginning. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, because it's called A Short History of Nearly Everything Paranormal. Mm -hmm. And uh, the basis from the different chapters are really the experiences and perspectives taken from the different sciences, uh, mm -hmm. from archaeology, where archaeologists they use clairvoyance to f make uh, spectacular finds, uh, and also so from anthropology, where anthropologists had to visit indigenous peoples, meeting with shamans and, and uh, kind of gifted people in the clairvoyant field and having uh, mind-blowing experiences. And also with psychologists uh, and parapsychologists doing laboratory experiments, for instance, with twins, uh, confirming the reality of telepathy and mm -hmm. such aspects. So uh, what, uh, say... Uh, divides uh, or say is kind of special with my book i think um, it's not based just on good stories uh, right. it, it, it's really by people that are not uh, raconteurs and spinners of yarns and that kind of people it's uh, facts uh, oriented yeah. people so so i feel it uh, gives also a solid base for the anecdotes because somehow if a Nobel Prize winner in physics tells you something, perhaps you shouldn't put more weight on it, but most of us would put more weight on that uh, than if some kind of old hippie on LSD tells you something. You right. know. Yeah. So uh, all respect for the hippies and uh, even for LSD, but you know, somehow we need to somehow to have reliability when people tell you a story. And as I said, I quote some Nobel Prize winners in physics, quite uh, convinced about this fear of reality. So therefore I have, uh, my, my editor, uh, she was, uh, she called herself a moderate skeptic. And therefore we somehow wanted to make uh, it a book that could be read also by skeptics. Uh, and therefore we had to be very keen on the facts, not yes. just our philosophy or perspectives, but, but really what is the data here? Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, that's the thing, isn't it? Again, as the human being, we want to know, but where is this yes. based from? Where, where does this information come from? I, mm. I consider myself more of a spiritual than a yes. human being. So for me, it's, mm. that's my world I live in, but I know yes. for other people, it's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I can't get, there and e exactly. you know and if they understand you know the physics behind it the science mm, behind it mm. the philosophy behind it um you know the there's a, a lot then they can take those pieces and put them together and start mm. kind of understanding what it means to them and exactly. when they understand what it means to them then they're they're more likely to open up mm. to the experience of it but yes. we always you know it's just like um we always need a structure in which to live in. You know, we, yes. we can't live in uh, fairyland, um, although it might be very nice, but it's not practical <laughs> as a human being, yeah. you mm -hmm. know? So we need a structure. So we always need that structure of information mm -hmm. and which to explore further. 
Yes. So your book is that basis of knowledge from different perspectives yes. that people can read and then explore further. Oh, that's very intriguing. I didn't know that. I want to know more. So you're a door opener. Uh, I, ho I, I hope to be that. And uh, I also share much of what, say, have helped open my doors. Yes. So, so, um, uh, and what has uh, often been the hindrance for people with a scientific mind to open to these spheres of reality is that uh, somehow uh, uh, the, the model of consciousness in uh, academic psychology has not been open to, say, uh, this. And that is um, somehow... Um, uh, what we can say, it's a historical thing, because earlier in our European history, if you go into alchemy, for instance, or, or older philosophies, uh, the, the spirit world was somehow taken for granted. There yeah. was no, no arguing about it. It was there, really. But after Newton and this modern natural science, somehow the model that came in place, even if Newton, he was quite open to alchemy and uh, also he was very much into biblical prophecies, in fact. Uh, but the models coming, uh, in the science after Newton, they didn't know what to do about phenomena like telepathy, clairvoyance, and precognition, uh, because their conception of time and space didn't allow for such phenomena. Yes. And if you are of scientific uh, mind and you have a model that do not allow, uh, uh, does not allow for these phenomena, then it makes it very difficult for you to, to believe uh, uh, that, say, if you have a precognitive dream or whatever, that this is real, you will just ascribe it to coincidence uh, without uh, understanding what it's really about, really. So what I do uh, I, the, the, in my book, I, I call it mental chiropractics because mm -hmm. I tried to crack and need a bit on stiffened models. Uh, on uh, so to uh, I will not uh, uh, launch five different models of consciousness so people can choose. You know, because my uh, task is not to give people the final right model of consciousness, but is somehow, as I said, to crack and need on the stiffened. Uh, academic model already in place so so as to open to new and more fruitful and more inclusive models of consciousness and i think i've succeeded quite well with that bravo bravo but Thank it you. is something that's needed you know it's the kind of the common sense approach to it um you know we have an awful lot of people that have awoken you know they, maybe it was the catchy maybe it was this maybe it was that and then mm. they jump into it and become the gurus of it yes but, but what they haven't yet done is truly and utterly experienced the understanding of it. Mm. They've gone by what, what the feeling and the impact it's had on their life. And, and absolutely wonderful because it's changed their lives. It's changing other lives. But mm. it, it, when it comes <clears throat> down to the core depth of understanding it, that mm. perhaps yet has not been there. Um, mm. You know, we want more and more people to waken up to that consciousness on whatever level it be scientific mm -hmm. you know academia uh, spirituality practicality uh, mm -hmm. because consciousness you know that consciousness of do no harm care for each other is mm -hmm. a vibration that is very practical yes I agree with you totally. And therefore, I also, I like, um, I have also uh, went into a bit more folkloristic material from Norway, for instance. We have lots of uh, kind of uh, focus uh, tradition yes. for this, yes, with healers and uh, uh, that can, people with warm hands, you know. Mm -hmm. And also, if you uh, lost a sheep or something, you could go to this guy and he would tell you where you, sh you can find your sheep because he was clairvoyant and so. So, mm -hmm. uh, that's a very practical way to use these abilities and they were extremely grounded people you know yes. because they were, yes and i like that approach uh, much more than the kind of fancy new age guru-ish thing so i like to to keep it very real the spirituality yeah. Uh, yeah. part of day, daily life yes mm. again mediumship you know when people hear that they think you know psychics fortune tellers mm -hmm. right now i've been a reader a seer oh. and a reader all my okay. life Right. Yes, so yes. Um, I, I choose to not tarot, never had an affinity with that. I'm a Romani gypsy reader. Um, uh -huh. But okay. I also it, you know, I when I'm in conversations with people, you know, the, again, the knowingness just comes in. Mm. You know, again, I know what I need to know when I need to know it. And when I'm doing a reading, it's the same thing. What do I need to know here to help them? Mm -hmm. You know, what do they need to know? You know, because exactly. basically what I'm doing is just showing them a map. Mm. You know, they've still got to walk it. 
right? It's, it's, uh, very interesting. Uh, may I ask, uh, you, uh, do you come from Romani background yourself? Um, from a Celtic background, from you know, my I'm from England. I'm in Canada now, but I'm from England. My mother was very fey. Yeah. Um, her family was very fey. We've all got it. My brother is an author, but his psychicness comes out in his writing. Um, uh, my sister is a reader, but a little bit too kind of restricted. But I was, I was a very sickly child yes. and in bed a lot, mm. left alone a lot. And in those mm. days, no TV, no iPad, no radio, right? And mm. so for me, I traveled and I didn't even know I was traveling. No, so you were surfing the mental internet. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Having no understanding, not until years later, that's what I was doing. But you know? did you then get some instruction from, say, your mother to how to develop these abilities in a way? Or No, okay. no. Um, we were, we were, I conjure into a lot of uh, uh, school fundraisers of doing readings with me. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> she was a very good reader. Mm -hmm. um, she was also um, a channeler. She channeled various spirits that um, she did. Okay. She did kind of quote the Ouija board, but I mean, it just moved so fast. It was not, it was just really the energy that came through her. But she's from the era, you mm. know, where um, she was born in India, a British person born in ah. India, and uh, went back to England when she was 12. She mm. always had that ability, but it was not an ability that was spoken of. No, I understand. So, so there was not a vibrant. Uh, no, no, because uh, no, I, I I fully understand. Yes. Mm. So I mean, even with me growing up, um, I was considered airy fairy. Yeah. And not grounded. <laughs> no. Mm. Right. You know, and and where is my sensibility? And I said, but that is sensible. How come you can't mm. see it? Mm. So yes. literally mm. working on different planes with my mm. family and other people through my life, mm. because this is the way it was for me. And, um, you know, it's, there's, you know, a lot of people think that, um, you know, mediumship is, is, is again, you know, kind of the supernatural and spooky, but mm. it is, it is simply opening up to mm. the channels of wisdom. Mm. Mm. And asking that knowledge to come through because you're feeling the vibration of that mm. person. What do mm. they need to know? Mm. No, uh, it seems like you have found a very beautiful way to work with this sphere. So, yeah. But now it's channeled in this way. So. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes. The well, world well, is well, opening up isn't it i i really do feel you know through my energetic things that the world is opening up to the consciousness there is more wonderment there has to be something more what am i feeling um i've done many shows on what i call sensuality mm -hmm. and it's not sexuality which everybody wants no, to jump to yes. it's opening up of the senses mm -hmm. and when you open up to the senses again with pure intent coming from mm. the heart in mm. that wonderment you realize there is so much more out there the trees mm. are talking to you the wind is the water mm. is mm. everything around you has a signature that is communicating mm. with you and mm. you've just got to look as which is your best channel mm. yeah, very interesting this uh i my book has been released uh, on two different publishers uh uh, the first one uh, was an English publisher with the office in Italy, and uh, that was uh, started by a very, uh, not very, but quite famous uh, British quantum physicist uh, called mm -hmm. David Peat. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, yes, he had worked together with, uh, with Sir, Sir Roger Penrose, who won the Nobel Prize in Physics last year, in fact. Uh, and uh, he also had conferences, uh, not uh, only for, say, uh, mediums and that kind of thing and said that they, they had kind of retreat center but they also a center for learning in italy where they invited uh, uh, physicists from all over the world mm -hmm. and uh, my editor was uh, the wife of uh, of uh, david pete uh, maureen and she told me she had discussed this uh, with lots of physicists uh, being at their conferences and she also said that almost everybody of them were open to some kind of mm -hmm. to a more to put it that yeah. way yeah mm. yeah have you heard of the uh, the buddhist group yes uh, uh Erwin laszlo yes I've, yes I've interviewed him and his son and going to be doing some more with him and and um you know there is somebody he elvin laszlo was a prodigy musician at the age of nine traveling i know I, know. I, I, I have one of his records from yeah, when he was here. 
Yeah, he's wonderful, isn't he? And, and you know, he said, yeah, I'll give you half an hour, 45 minutes later, you know, and, and his son mm. and I kind of really, really went on. Mm. Um, m- my theory to do with music is, and it's my healer, um, mm-hmm. we get out of sync in our psyche, in our beingness. And music is a wonderful way not only to calm the senses, Mm. but to reset our balance Mm. because Mm. the frequency of the music Mm. is 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 bringing in and resetting our channels and Mm. as a prodigy at the age of nine you know i said this is the reason i believe that he it has taken the path that he's taken Mm -hmm. um, into the metaphysical into the the energetic and spiritual world and understands it so well because Mm. that music already he had his channels open that might, uh, of course, very well uh, be an important part. Uh, he tells in one of his books, he tells himself, it was also uh, the death of a loved friend, mm. really. Uh, and I think he was in Greece then uh, with uh, some other friends, and they were somehow uh, talking about uh, a deceased, very dear friend. And uh, some person present said, uh, oh, it's a pity, no, his wisdom and goodness is lost. And then it suddenly struck uh, Laszlo. No, it's not lost. It's no. still there on this Akashic field. Just uh, waiting and, to be tapped into. <laughs> yes, exactly. So that was kind of, he, as, as I understood it, he explained that to be a kind of turning point in his recognition of the, the being in this field. Uh, it was, of course, an intuitive recognition, but somehow uh, things uh, fell in place when he suddenly saw that twist right. uh, and Clarity. i have had yes uh, and i have had similar experiences myself really so so um, uh, i also am an amateur musician I, w- I wanted to become a pianist when i was younger but uh, due to some uh, tendencies problems i i had to take a different route mm-hmm. but uh, i i i uh, i'm still much into music and it has been very helpful for me do you find when you when you listen or play music that it it literally takes you into a place where those channels open right up yes m- much more than uh, but a, a very different aspect i also was to a seminar with matthew manning this uh, british healer you know mm-hmm. uh, and he said uh, you could view this from different perspectives of course but um you know this split brain uh, mm-hmm. physiology where you speak about the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere uh, and you can somehow use music uh, either to uh, what you can say um to to calm down the left mm-hmm. logical sphere yes. or you can use music to excite the right hemisphere like mm-hmm. the bushman rituals for instance yes. in kalahari they perform wonderful healing features with the, the, the ecstatic uh, jumping and drumming mm-hmm. but you also uh, you could do the other way more like the the buddhist uh, calm uh, uh, mantra chanting and this singing mm-hmm. bowls and that uh, calming down so somehow it's uh, making the left brain and the right brain connect in a way so you get connected with a wider and then the opening is there so uh, i have uh, both used music in a meditative way to to get down but also used uh, i'm also a salsa dancer so i use it Mm. to excite the spirits also yes so uh, Yes. yes Mm -hmm. Yes. And that's, you know, people think about, you know, oh, if you're spiritual, you've got to be in a, um, you know, flat, kumbaya type thing. No. (laughs) As in music, if it was one tone, we would tone out. You Mm. know, Mm. it is like music. Mm. It has its lows, it has its highs, it's, you know, it has its embracement, it it has Mm. to shake it up. And Mm. that's the thing is, is that experience your spirituality uh, the opening of that conscience the same way as you would the music or the dance. Mm, exactly. And you see that also, uh, for instance, if you go to the Jewish spiritual traditions, uh, they use lots of dance in the Hasidic tradition from mm. the Eastern Europe and also the Islamic, the mystic, uh, the Sufi tradition, you know, the whirling uh, dervishes. Yes. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, originally from Turkey uh, uh, after the tradition of the Rumi, the great uh, Sufi mystic. Uh, they use lots of, of uh, dance and also drumming and, uh, you know, so so to use the body uh, 
as uh, the vehicle of the spiritual. You know, that's uh, if you see uh, the Sufis dancing, they often have uh, uh, the right arm lifted up, you know, uh, symbolically, and the left going down, uh, whirling like this. And somehow is that connecting uh, yes. the heavenly sphere with the earthly one, mm. uh, and say receiving the energy symbolically the through the right hand, and uh, yes, and uh, and somehow delivering it to the world through the left. So I think uh, m m m most sound spiritual uh, tradition will recognize uh, the importance of including the body and also uh, that kind of say ecstasy in 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 this, and not just be kind of flat and uh, without uh, say. <laughs> it's a kind of very physical. Also the shamans, you know, they yes. drum and they have this yes. uh, rather physical uh, approach to spirituality. Yeah. Well, you've got the Celtic, and of course, you know, some of the most beautiful mediums for helping you get there there's the singing bowls you know yes. there's there's the drums but there's also um the pans you okay. know oh my goodness oh the the sound those pans were make just you know with their flat hands it uh -huh. just it just boom, 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 boom. Okay, you know, it's a lot of like have... a matrix effect. You know? <laughs> okay, you know? okay. You know, it just, it just, uh, the music itself is very rhythmic, but you can just feel it rippling through you and mm. just oh, open you up. Okay. And, you know, it's just wonderful. So I highly recommend that music. And the thing is, we have these tools, don't we? They're not we just have. for entertainment. That, you know, mm. music used to be like storytelling, it was that mm. connection. Mm. You know, to the divine, it was that that challenge. It was also the earth appreciation. You know, um, mm. I'm very much from the Celtic background, and of course, there were a lot of ritual dances in yes. there as well. Um, it is about celebration, but it is about connection. Mm. So we have to, you know, we our our lives are our responsibility. So if you don't like what's happening to your life, then you need to explore. Mm -hmm. the possibilities and the opportunities out there to expand mm. and know more and maybe uh, you'll find it for they... music or maybe you'll find it for your book maybe they'll find it through something else but be mm. willing to explore mm. I, I it's probably uh, probably everybody of your listeners know it from beforehand but i found it was a very good quote it said if you don't like the story then change the script <laughs> yes <laughs> i mean so, I just uh, you know it's a no-brainer Mm -hmm. Why stay stuck in mm -hmm. something? I interviewed a 10-year-old who'd written a book, 365 mm -hmm. Days of Gratitude with a Positive Attitude. Okay. And it was simply every day, I'm grateful for this today, or this happened, yes. I'm mm -hmm. grateful for that. And mm -hmm. it was just so logical. And she said, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. If you're unhappy, why mm -hmm. don't you go and do something that makes you happy? Mm -hmm. Why be sad? And mm -hmm. it's why do we as adults get so caught up in something mm. that I need to define my sadness. Mm. Yeah, I understand. I, I also uh, every day I take uh, time to find something that's uh, good for me. Uh, just uh, it could be a good cu cup of coffee. Just yes. uh, al 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 always yes. be on the look for something. Yes, exactly. Uh, it's something that builds you up and somehow make you feel good about life. So that's very important. But of course, uh, you know, I uh, say I'm I befriended a Syrian ref refugee and he had been downed in the Mediterranean in three times uh, because uh, he had fled from the war in Syria. And of course, I will not start to, uh, he is a very constructive guy, but I would not start uh, telling him you shouldn't be sad, you know, because right, uh, right. they bo bombed his house. And, uh, exactly. Yes. But and, you've uh, got to go through it, though. You can't stay stuck yes, there. Yes, but still, uh, somehow... Um, If you are, as they say, if you are going to meet people, you must meet them there they are. Where they're at, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's very, I also worked, in, I uh, education also in gestalt therapy and psychosynthesis, and I worked in uh, psychiatry for five years also. So it's so important to somehow not be... Uh, Uh, pushy about people mm. getting out of the suffering somehow it have to melt from the inside in a way and and uh, because as they said uh, it's diff it's uh, easy to spread the darkness uh, if mm. you s s uh, somehow try to push people into the light in a way right. so it's very important somehow to respect uh, uh, me myself I will be very personal about that but we were a family of four and three of them are dead oh. uh, and of course yes and that oh, is so it's very hard for me and suffered mm. depression 
passion for many years. And I know you can don't, not always just go from sadness to happiness, you know, that we right. can no. superficial. You have to somehow process things very... Uh, that in is a, the point. It's yes. being willing to process, though. You know, yes. it, so many people get stuck in that darkness and, and almost kind of because they're getting attention, they feel the victimization, they victimize yes. themselves. And it's like there isn't any one human being on this planet that hasn't had something they've had to face exactly and part of that face is discover your strength your courage your abilities mm. but it's also to open up to the powers that be to realize there's more um i have a wonderful interview coming up with a woman whose daughter committed suicide at the age of 18 mm -hmm. but she is doing more work passed over Mm -hmm. working with other souls that committed suicide or even coming in and preventing <clears throat> others from committing suicide mm -hmm. than mm -hmm. she could do in her human life. Mm -hmm. So life carries on, but it's not in the same way that we can't touch or feel. It, exactly. You know, so it's, but, it, it, but 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 uh, I have found at least that somehow uh, these are uh, perspectives that are very helpful, but uh, uh, one cannot expect uh, the people having, say, lost their family in a car crash or whatever to immediately embrace that perspective. No, you and know, nothing that is it, immediate. It, it, There's a process. There's a yes, time period. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, this, the reason I do these shows, I, I believe that inspiration begets invitation. Mm -hmm. And when you're inspired by another story, you know, mm -hmm. oh, you went through that or you were in that pain. How yes, did you get yes. through it? They talk mm -hmm. about how they got through the process, what mm -hmm. they did, where they're now. And mm -hmm. they're not delusional to the fact of the pain or the no. loss that's still mm -hmm. there. What they've mm -hmm. learned to do is understand the gift in it because there always is. And mm -hmm. what they're able to do to help others now. Mm. As the gift of service is one of the greatest. Yes, of the world. I think that's uh, and that is somehow expanding the perspective from your own life to to the all life. Yeah, uh, and, and it and, invites and, people to believe there's more, and then it's mm. up to them to take that journey. Mm. Yes, uh, uh, I, uh, I went in there. Little freezing here. And she uh, was very fond of uh, the concept of reframing. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what a phenomenon is, is not d d just defined by itself, but it defined uh, from the frame you see it win within. And she used a st just a kind of a teaching story just to make it. Uh, uh, if you go uh, along a road and you see a, a person there uh, with uh, some kind of uh, tools, you you know, uh, chopping uh, on a stone, that kind of mason thing, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know what you call it. What is called it? it, it, it chisel? Chisel? Yeah, the chisel. The chisel. chisel. Yes. Yeah, chisel yeah. and hammer, you know. Yeah. And and you see a guy sitting there uh, by the road and doing that, and he looks very gloomy, you know. And you ask him, what uh, do you do? And uh, he said, can't you see? I'm, I'm chiseling stone. Uh, okay, okay. And you go further down the road, and you see another guy, and he's uh, doing exactly the same thing. He's sitting there with the chisel and hammer hammer you know but he looks quite happy and very absorbed in that and you ask him uh, what are you doing and he, uh, he will tell you i'm building a cathedral yes perspective yes <laughs> yes, yes. So, at, right yes yes so uh, reframing has been yeah. also a very valuable concept for me so if you see you suffering in some kind of higher perspective it will give much more meaning to it and then you also as you said will be uh, more readily available for, for somehow including other people in your say, yeah. experience of life. So that's yeah. a very important uh, ex, ex, uh, expansion and extension of, of uh, say, the, the, the ego sphere. Yeah, yeah. Mm. the willingness to, to redirect. Mm, you know, yes. I mean, mm. um, you, you know, you lost the ability to kind of be the musician you wanted to be. And, you know, at the time, probably quite catastrophic. I want to be a musician. I can't be yes, this musician I want to be. It was a mm, loss for you. But in was. the cosmic world, it was a redirect. We want you to understand the gift of music, but you mm. are not here to mm. use the music as your tool because mm. you came here to do something else. But mm. music is your foundation in which will help you do that. Mm. That is a very fruitful perspective. There also is this... Uh, a teaching story from the Sufi tradition, this Islamic mysticism, uh, where a guy he has heard that uh, on 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 uh, on the what is it, the field he lives there should be uh, buried a treasure 
there, uh, and he uh, digs up uh, the, this, uh, the whole field, uh, and uh, he can't find the treasure. Uh, but in the process of digging up this wide field, uh, and the, to, to somehow, uh, what you can say, he had to remove the stones and everything, suddenly it's possible to grow lots of corn in that field, nice. you know. So th what he was looking for, uh, somehow uh, he found something that was even more valuable, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so, but uh, that was kind of, yeah, what you can say, a hidden intention in his activities. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, life is an inside out story. Um, yeah, that's a good perspective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have to live from the inside out. But when we choose to go in, you know, connect with our soul, connect with our, open up our heart, uh, use our spirit action, and the mind will know what it knows to what it needs to know. We realize that there are so many tools around us that mm -hmm. help us to do the kind of work we're here to do. Mm. And our self-discovery is, what is that work? What is my instrument? Mm. You know, how do I play it? How do I perfect it? Which orchestra do I join? Mm. That's the journey of life. It's not for mm. you to come here knowing it all. It's mm. for you to come in discovery of what is your role in it. Mm. Uh, and our experiences make up that role. Yes. They, they give us the teachings and, the, you know, the that structure in mm. which to help other people. So I think if we could look at everything all of it all the paranormal all the the earth vibration the everything and mm -hmm. look at it as in wonderment mm -hmm. not skepticism but wonderment mm -hmm. why do we have skepticism we don't understand how are you going to understand unless you're willing to open up and explore mm -hmm. Yes. No, I, I think uh, I, I very much wisdom in, in, in what you say. But as I said, I, I have lots of different friends. Some are same from a kind of spiritual background and some are very atheistic. And so, so I, I, I have uh, felt somehow it's very important to somehow, uh, what you say, uh, yeah, but uh, what is called co cooperate also right. with uh, yes uh, as i said because uh, somehow it is so important to some to see uh, where is that person finding his or her meaning in life somehow to mm -hmm. to to start with his or her own discovery of themselves somehow yes so 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 that i will not deliver my message as a finished package for him or her to accept or reject so yes so i hope at least my, my adelpha said uh, i give uh, five different models for consciousness in my book uh, uh, and uh, i i want to somehow just uh, give people some hint and in which direction they might be able to find something of value for them so uh, i i wanted the book also to be an open-ended uh, questioning thing yes. more than a kind of a preaching thing so right yeah. and the thing mm. is 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 that um you know uh, I'm, I'm a person i will open a book and what i need to read is there right but yes when when you are in that exploration of, of that self-discovery um going through the whole book reading you know all of those perspectives Mm. one of them is going to jump right out at you one I of them so. is going to be an affinity for you oh i this explains the way i feel or the why mm. i see this or mm. why i react that way and mm. and as i said so many people are their consciousness is awakening but they mm. have no understanding of exactly what it is they're feeling or mm. what to do with it so mm. having a book that gives those perspectives based in the structure and the building blocks Mm. of understanding they're going to have an affinity with something where oh, that is expressing the way i feel i have an affinity mm. with that now that gives them their own permission to explore that even further but they have a direction now in which to take that energy uh, that would be wonderful if some people felt that after having read my book and uh, i have got quite a lot of uh, say good feedback that somehow people have found that uh, there was a medical student from my hometown he studies medicine in poland and he came over to me at the bus stop and he had read my book and said ah no i know what you uh, wanted to tell me last time. so i, 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 I it yes and, yes yes seen the light in a small way at least yeah. 
yeah. so um, yeah. uh, he is also into psychedelics that might be, have somehow helped him. That's a double-edged sword, this psychedelic thing. But some, for some people, that also can somehow uh, at least open them to something more in a way. I mean, LSD, when it first came out, was a medicinal drug to open people's psyche yes, up, to yes. open up mm. the mind and and some of the best music and storytelling yes. has come from that yes. uh, it is again as with anything use mm. wisely mm. use moderately it is mm. where we always run into the problem is when we go into excess of everything mm. right so it is Again, balance. Everything mm. has a balance, doesn't it? Mm. Yes, I, I totally agree with you. So, uh, because as I said, I am quite uh, traumatized as a person myself. So, uh, I. Uh, I'm quite, uh, say, restrictive uh, with uh, that kind of things from my own. Uh, but I have friends that have benefited uh, greatly from being in therapy, using psychedelics as a part of their therapy. Uh, with, uh, so not as a party drug, but as a yeah. kind of self-discovering process. Yeah. Yes, mm. breaking through the trauma. Um, yes. Mm. You know, I, um, as, as a, a, a spiritual person and as a, a medium, um, I'm also an empath, so I'm inclined to feel the yes. pain out there. Um, mm. It's very hard for me to walk barefoot on the earth because everybody keeps saying, ground it, give it to the earth. And the earth is saying, please take it back. It's oh. too much. You know? yeah. oh. Stop giving me your pain. Stop giving me your joy. Yeah. Stop dancing on the earth again, please. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel that. And sometimes, you know, I, I do suffer from depression. I have an illness myself and it can be overwhelming mm -hmm. and mm. all consuming. And, mm. you know, I had to go to some medicinals to help me stabilize that which i don't take uh -huh. all the time but when i get into that i don't want to go down that rabbit hole no and, and it uh. is it's an awful place of despair where you feel somebody's come in and just ripped your entire heart out and uh. there is no snapping out of it or you know mm. get over yourself or isn't it about time mm. you got over that there exactly. is no reasoning with it whatsoever it mm. is an emotional state of being that has no clarity and it's mm. you have to work through it or find a way or to take something that will help um not suppress it but calm it mm. Um, mm. now i can manage it with music but if i know that it's going down that road again i know mm. i i have the pills that i have to take so we have to we can't just a lot of people think being spiritual is like you don't go to medicine you don't do mm. this doctors are bad mm. no mm. in the dish of life in the smoker's board or the buffet of life all of these dishes have a reason. Mm. They're all there for a reason. Mm. No, I agree with you. There's always an answer, isn't there? Uh, uh, it's very difficult to say if there always is, but somehow uh, <laughs> uh, I would say that also all, always a direction towards an answer, at least. And yes. that I, yes. So, I, 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 you know, uh, St. Paul, he says, uh, then in this life, we will always see like in a mirror or like, you know, you can't uh, get the whole truth, you know. But somehow uh, I'm, I'm, have become quite modest, you know, in the way that I don't need to, 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 to have all the answers. You know, I just yes. somehow feel to, as I said, finding a kind of a, a direction. Uh, Rilke, you know, probably him, the poet, Rainer Maria Rilke, Czech poet, he said, uh, religion, what should that be? He's, he he defined it as a direction in the soul. So mm. that is my, uh, so I don't need the, the answer really. I yes. must feel somehow that I'm going in the right direction. And also uh, Martin Buber, he, the Jewish philosopher, he said, finding is not the end of the road. It's, the, it's, it's, it, the road's internal middle. So it's kind of a process, process, process yes. in a way. Yeah. yeah. Because life in, in itself, I think, is dynamic. It's not, it, it's not final in a way. It's just evolving all the time. Yeah. We, we, we are many chapters in our book of life. And yes. even when this physical chapter comes to an end, you know, the spiritual chapter, your signature will carry on. Mm. Um, you know, we're in this human vessel for mm. a, a cosmic lesson.
you mm -hmm. know so it's an experience here but uh, you know people think it all comes to an end when the body comes to an end no it doesn't it goes on mm -hmm. or it maybe go on in another life or it may just go on, on in the ether and, you mm -hmm. know and as far as you know the solutions I, I do believe always there are solutions out there and they're in that knowingness and sometimes mm -hmm. it is purely in there's the arrow mm -hmm. take this path and it will be revealed so yes. many people want to go forward with a map Yes. Right. No, go prepared. Mm -hmm. Have your tools and things in your backpack. Mm -hmm. Right. But go in wonderment, one foot in mm -hmm. front of the other and explore because mm -hmm. that will reveal mm -hmm. what it is you need to know. And if you come to a mm -hmm. crossroads, pause, which mm -hmm. way feels right, which, you know, it's not like, oh, I'm stuck now. I don't know where to mm -hmm. go. It's mm -hmm. okay to pause. Mm. I, I fully agree. Uh, there's a Norwegian expression that might be international, but it's uh, and that means the way we'll appear while walking. Mm -hmm. I 100% yeah. agree with that. Mm. It's like, mm. don't wait for everything to be perfect. You know, the exactly. weather's fine, that this is fine, that's fine. No, mm. just get out there. You know, I like mm. Nike's thing, just do it. Yeah, yeah. Right? You did. Yeah, yeah. Just mm. going, if it's one toe in front of the other, okay. Eventually mm. it'll be a foot and eventually it'll be a stride mm. as mm. you gain your confidence, as you become mm. more aware. Mm. Because nature <coughs> and the cosmos is always assisting you. There's a famous quote from, from uh, Dao De Jing, this Chinese uh, Taoist wisdom book from about 600 before Christ. And uh, it says, uh, a, a journey of a thousand miles starts with one single step. You aren't going to get there until you move. <laughs> yeah. you know? And, and it doesn't yeah. matter. Well, what if it's the wrong road? Then you will be redirected. I think so. Mm. So, you know, it again goes back to what you said, intent. Mm. If your heart is in good intentions, mm. even if you're led down a cul-de-sac, a, a, you know, block mm. road, mm. Yes. Uh, you're still there to pick some information up before you turn mm. around and go down to another road. Mm. It's not the end of the world. Mm. It might be a no. little frustrating sometimes. So we're like, I wish I had gone down that road, but there's always a lesson in it. There's always mm. a reason in it. Mm. No, I think so. Uh, uh, the, this famous musician, uh, Brian Eno, I don't know if you know him. No. Uh, no. Uh, he's uh, English, I think. He was uh, working together with uh, David Bowie many years ago, mm. and, uh, as far as I remember. But um, he has made a pack of, of cards uh, that is, uh, I, I don't remember the name of them right now on the air, but um, uh, that's that somehow are meant to open for creativity. And uh, the re uh, say the story behind the pack of cards was he was in the studio and making some music, uh, but uh, he had get mixed something uh, wrong in in uh, when he I don't know if the violins were too loud or whatever, mm -hmm. but uh, he suddenly struck uh, it struck him. Hmm, but perhaps I could use that, uh, you know, uh, perhaps even if it was not intended from the start, perhaps he could use it uh, for some new say sound picture that yes. uh, so and then he formulated what is the first and basic sentence of that pack of cards is that honor thy error as a hidden intention. Yes. Yes. Excuse my background. It flops in now and now, now and again. Um, my new site coming up. That's okay. the thing is, is I don't believe anything is a waste of time. Um, unless you, unless you're staying stuck in something and unwilling to move forward. I believe that everything, you know, I don't believe in failure unless you have given up, mm. um, you know, and there's, there's give up for the moment because you're traumatized from something, but there's the giving up because it's too much effort to move forward. Mm. Um, I think that in every time you fall down, uh, the getting back up, you're so much stronger, mm. you're so much wiser. You know now how to fall down. Would we have the light bulb if he had not persisted? Uh, probably not. Exactly. So mm -hmm. it didn't work. Okay, I know it doesn't work that way. Let's try another way. Mm. Oh, that didn't work. Well, I'm not going to give up. It's a bit frustrating. I know, but let's keep trying. Mm. Right? And I think if we can have that optimistic, let's keep trying. Mm. Let's keep experiencing. Mm. Because those experiences open us up even more to the guidance and it opens up more to our abilities and it opens up more to the understanding 
of mm. why we're here and what life is about. The mm. willingness to open up. That's very important, definitely. So you've had all these experiences. You've written this wonderful book. Thank you. Um, the practical book, which, as you said, for people, and, and it doesn't matter, you, you know, you could be somebody that is immersed in, in any one of those particular subjects, but you don't know much about the others. And in order to actually understand what you are understanding more, read up on all the other aspects of it, because now it'll probably give you clarity, even more so on the, on the one particular subject that you're in. We don't have to know it all, but having a base understanding mm. right? I, uh, gives I us hope... that clarity to build on. Mm. Now, I hope my book will provide that for people being interested because I, I, I um, say approach the theme from many different angles. And uh, as I said, from very practical things, uh, uh, also the spiritual traditions, a bit from uh, transpersonal psychology, therapy, and also I give some exercises how to train your intuition. And mm. I uh, refer to some kind of esoteric traditions that might be helpful you know some people uh, need to train within a frame and some people just want to go it alone more or less so so i try to as i said give people also uh, both theoretical perspectives but also a practical bag of tools uh, yeah. they can try to somehow develop or open more up to this sphere yeah it is definitely the book that is needed for those people that are in that fourth dimensional awakening <laughs> without that, so. without the uh, you know the understanding what they've woken to, mm. and you know this is the thing is that uh, don't wait for someone to push you or pull you into something. Mm. Mm. Be willing to be inquisitive, and mm. again yeah. I use the word explore over and over again. Explore what mm. it is you could be feeling, and by mm. having a book that's got all of that in there in one cover, you will get a better understanding of what you're feeling or better mm. a connection to something of how you're feeling or a better mm. way to actually use those senses so that Thank you, you can discover more of what you're feeling. <laughs> exactly. Uh, uh, the history about uh, the book, uh, uh, short version, is that, um, uh, as, as I told you, there was a, a kind of crisis in my life and uh, I had these perspectives and I discussed with a friend of mine who is an experienced uh, psychotherapist and he said, you must uh, share those perspectives yes. in the book and uh, yes. because it could be so helpful to many of, of uh, people all around the world he, he immediately imagined that the book would be translated you know norwegian is quite a small language but he immediately, uh, immediately saw the say a potential for getting translated into bigger languages as mm. english for instance uh, we are also now trying to get a spanish translation and it will be released in czech uh, earlier uh, later this year so 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 uh, and he said uh, because also he felt that people were coming to him you know with kind of psychological crisis and they told him about say getting precognitive dreams or uh, telepathic experiences people are living in other place uh, in the country and suddenly they felt in their body what would happen to a family member you know and all mm -hmm. that kind and and the normal psychologist will often tell them oh that was a strange coincidence like that you know they did, did not provide any real understanding no. of this so but uh, he felt that my perspective would be very helpful for people and uh, also for psychologist so uh, in the ward he is responsible for he bought three copies of my book and placed it, uh, for the young psychologist to read so <laughs> so that yeah. is a, yes so uh, the practical aspect in a way that somehow yeah, again framing or reframing giving people a positive and constructive frame to understand that kind of special experiences because statistics will tell you that more than half the people will have say experiences of telepathy clairvoyance or that mm -hmm. kind of things through their life so and uh, millions and millions and millions of these experiences and just being discarded as coincidence uh, or more or less meaningless or strange or, or, or just in or, your or, mind or, yeah yes or even threatening or whatever yeah. you know so to frame all those uh, or reframe all those uh, exp millions of experiences in a positive, constructive life uh, that can help people grow and discover themselves. I felt that was kind of a task for this book, really. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I introduced um, uh, a psychotherapist and she said, 
I realized in dealing with my patients, I was trained to deal with their mind. Yes. But I wasn't trained to deal with the heart and soul. And so she exactly. went on that training and she changed it to sacred therapy rather than psychotherapy, uh -huh. embracing our whole sacredness because our soul and heart have its own intellect. Mm, its spirit mm. has its own mind. And yes. if you're only uh, you know, attending to the neck up, exactly. you are missing <laughs> the whole yes. of it. And, and so many people I've interviewed were given a gift of channeling or this or that and mm -hmm. were literally locked away as crazy yes. because nobody would understand until mm -hmm. eventually, you know, somebody, I, I don't know how they got out, but anyway, they, they did <laughs> and realized that the voices in their head were mm -hmm. voices that needed to come out as a form of channel mm -hmm. and that they weren't mm -hmm. crazy. But immediately, mm -hmm. you know, the medical thing, because they don't understand, Mm. Oh, you're just crazy, psycho, psycho, so, you know, so no, it's his own mm. psychopath or psycho this or psycho anything mm. else. And, you know, the fact that your book is, you know, in an award like that, it should actually be reading for all psychiatrists, so, psychotherapists. Thank you. So, you know, <laughs> because if you cannot address the whole of a person, mm. mind, mm. body, heart and soul and spirit, then you mm. are not serving your patient. No, I, I think you're right on that. So uh, also, um, there, uh, a quite famous author here in uh, Norway, uh, she's writing in the more, what we can say, entertaining, easy genre, but, but uh, she is uh, quite clairvoyant and she was locked up when she was young. Mm -hmm. uh, but there was, in fact, a wise psychiatrist in this hospital. Yeah. And uh, eventually he went over to her and uh, he said, uh, I found out you're not psychotic, you're psychic. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And, and, and then suddenly, uh, th this study, all that she saw made sense to her because she got, again, this constructive frame to, to, to look yeah. at this. And uh, if you understand that somehow you are able to say, uh, I, I, I have a couple of psychic advisors I consult from time to time. And one of uh, uh, those uh, ladies uh, is very sensitive. So if she goes to a shop, for instance, and there are five people uh, in front of her in the queue, she will start somehow to get the life stories of those five people. Mm -hmm. And that can be, of course, very confusing. Very and, overwhelming. And, <laughs> yes, overwhelming, exacting and taxing and all that. So she has to somehow navigate that landscape very carefully and uh, if that's a national day with celebrations and lots of you know uh, music and all that it can be quite a lot for her so she has to shield herself and she does healing and uh, have clients one by one uh, at her home um, but she is, is very harmonious and you know as I said I worked in psychiatry and I think I quite uh, I know when a person is crazy and uh, yes. when a person yes so yeah. and she is definitely not crazy she's one of the most harmonious persons I know, really. Uh, but it's it's, misunderstood, uh, right? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, luckily, she had a brother that had a, a, a kind of same gift as her, you know. So, um, but but it's, it's it's difficult to navigate the, this uh, landscape, especially if you have to fit in the normal, say, nine to five working scheme and all that. So so uh, it's 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 a challenge, really. So, but I, know. Uh, I think yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, so, I think yeah. I think one of the reasons I was given illness is that mm. my my hard energy would be too much for people, mm. and and especially at a time where people's energies hadn't been escalated, our energies are being escalated a lot now, and we're yes. going to see a lot of people who who have embraced the spiritual realm kind of get shaken up and be drained mm -hmm. is because they're teaching spirituality but they haven't yet really gone to the core of themselves to release mm -hmm. and it's time mm -hmm. for them to release but our any the, the cosmic energy is on the incline because mm -hmm. it's wanting us to rise up to a higher level and i mm -hmm. think as a as a, a person i've always come from a heart energy and i think it was mm -hmm. too much and i really mm -hmm. do because i have an illness now fibromyalgia and that slows ah. me right down right mm. so and i i understand why it's there people say but if you're living in the spiritual world all your, sh your chakras and everything are open why do you have this and mm. i say 
it is to dampen my energy yeah, 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 until yeah. people mm. are ready to receive it. And when they mm. receive it, I'm released from it. But mm. I think that was the reason why I always had illness was to kind mm. of keep me at that level without being, I was already too much for people. So okay. if I had that energy, I would have just blown a few more minds, you know, okay. or been locked away. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know? so, yeah. Yeah. So sometimes we're given things mm. for a reason, right? It, it's mm. a form of protection. Mm, it could be, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. very interesting perspective. That's the only one I can come up with. From <laughs> I've got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the point is, is life as a human being doesn't always give us a fair hand, mm-hmm. but it never gives us more than what we really and honestly can, you know, um, can embrace. You know, mm-hmm. it's it may be hard. You lost all those family members, and and yes. uh, clearly knocked you for six flattened you out for a while mm. you had mm. to go through the process but look where you are now well you didn't give up right no i i didn't <laughs> right uh, you know there is uh, there is some perspectives uh, I, I don't know uh, why this is this is kind of um, I don't know what is meant to be shared with everybody, but you know, I, I, I was, uh, in fact, I met an extremely psychic person back in 1981, uh, uh, 1989, and uh, she recorded uh, more than an hour of visions about my future mm-hmm. uh, uh, on two audio cassettes, which I still uh, have, and uh, it's uh, it's mind blowing, really, what she was able to describe in quite a detail, you know. So that is also have somehow uh, uh, changed my perspective of what is time because you know we we operate in, uh, from day to day with our common sense uh, yeah. say limitation of of, of uh, linear time mm-hmm. but somehow uh, in the wider scope of things uh, time is not linear I think so so that could be also a helpful perspective but somehow uh, <laughs> I will not compare myself to Elvis but I saw a program uh, uh, Elvis Presley and he was wondering why was I given this role of uh, yeah. becoming Elvis because he was you know a poor boy and a trailer uh, what is it? he was a lorry driver and uh, suddenly he was world famous you know and people yeah. uh, listening to him and all that and he was very uh, say searching about uh, what is the meaning of this why was I given this gift and also in some respect a curse because he couldn't yeah. go to cinema because there no. was all these people and so so it also was uh, taxing for him to being yes. Elvis for Elvis being Elvis so and uh, he tried to find a spiritual perspective I don't know really if he succeeded but at least he he was very on the look for to to see his life in the bigger perspective and uh, you know I also sometimes wonder why did I end up writing this book because I will say that uh, other scholars that in some some respects are more clever than me and um, certainly people that are more gifted in clairvoyance than me i have some some abilities but you know uh, as i know I said, why I, you were uh, i know you. why you were no <laughs> if if you were too academically clever it would yes. be too academic if it was too coming from the mediumship of spirituality it would mm-hmm. be too far out there you're the happy balance you bring both <laughs> of you. the worlds together in a way that people can understand you're the door opener Thank you. Thank you. That's a very nice way to put it. Uh, I saw also, uh, you know, the, the cartoonist um, Charles M. Schultz, uh, he made The Peanuts, you know. Yes. And, uh, yes, uh, which was uh, syndicalized all over the world mm. uh, with Lucy and uh, Linus and Charlie Brown. And, and, and he was asked uh, also about uh, a bit, he was, say, reflecting on his own role as a cartoonist because he, he said uh, many drawers are much more excellent excellent and virtuosic mm-hmm. than me, he said. And also there are lots of comedians much more funny than me. Uh, but he also combined that com- combination of the elements of drawing and, and humor. That was quite unique, really. So, so uh, as I said, I, I, but uh, there's a beautiful perspective you gave me there. So thanks for that. <laughs> it's not about the comparison. It's, uh, it is about the happy medium. And that's what, what your yeah. book is, has to be. It has to, mm. it has to be a door opener to the layman who's coming Mm. into this world but it Mm. also has to be an eye opener Mm. for the academia and also for the spiritual world to understand Mm. the other aspects of it Mm. 
right? Because yeah. I'm a very big spiritualist, but I also understand the practicality yes. of life. Uh -huh. And it's finding that balance. You can't live in one to the extreme and expect mm. to be happy because life is about balance. I don't, mm. I will claim no academia skills whatsoever, but mm. I have respect mm. for the academia mind. But I'm mm. always trying to get the academia mind to open up more to the knowingness side of things. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Ah, so that yeah. there is a balance. Mm. Don't just be reliant on what you perceive as truth. Mm. Discover that truth and bring it back to your perception. Mm. Uh, I was reminded now while you were talking about there's a Jewish old legend uh, that uh, uh, that's uh, in the, the Hasidic tradition from the Eastern Europe. They say that the uh, the shoemaker is the symbol of uh, the person uh, that somehow uh, is have the sound spirituality. And mm -hmm. uh, there was a disciple asking his rabbi, "Why the shoemaker?" Yes, because he or she eventually uh, sews together what is. Uh, on the uh, on the upper side with what is on the low side you know so it's uh, unification of of the upper and the lower in a way but they're also uh, creating a soul ah i got that one <laughs> <laughs> the soul the basis of which mm. to walk on right so very good so, <laughs> yeah. so you know it is it's not about the extremities you know i can mm. really go out there i interviewed many of the channelers and uh, you know yes, who yes. were speaking mm. the entities i can talk multi-dimensional is my world but mm. i am just as intrigued with the other world and how the mind works Mm. Why do we do? Mm. Why do we think what we do? And how can we take that mind and that beautiful essence of who we are mm. and merge them together as a whole? Because mm. I then do believe we're more balanced. Mm. And in that balance, we are stronger. Mm. Yes, I think so. That, that's uh, definitely, that is also the Kabbalistic perspective. You somehow finding the bits and bringing them together and uh, unification and all that. So, it's, um, so many, say, nice symbols for that work, really. Mm. Mm. Well, how do people get hold of this book? Well, uh, most easily on Amazon UK, I think so. Um, uh, but also this, uh, you were in Canada, no, I don't know. Uh, be which, throughout North America, yeah, it should be on yes. Amazon there. So Amazon UK, Amazon Canada, Amazon.com. Uh, also this uh, Powell's Books, Barnes and Nobles and all big web stores, really. Right. So it's mm. the short history of of, uh, of the of nearly everything paranormal. I love that you put nearly everything because you've left it open, right? Because there's more to explore. All right. You know, it's it's still it's 540 pages, but you know, it's just a kind of beginning of the exploration of this big uh, sphere. So right. yeah, and you have the eye right in the middle. You've got all those wonderful fractals in there. You know, it's the you've combined even in the graphics the multi layers that are Thank already you. represented so i love the I'd love the in-depth that you've gone into of the representation uh, yeah, uh, we worked quite a lot on the cover also to mm. get that right so uh, yeah. i'm glad you noticed that yes uh, so so um uh, that we will be available there at least and um and will you also, spell your name for people so you know when they put in the title to, to make sure that it's got the right offer uh, yes spell I it out for my that, listeners yes uh, I first, first saying it and then spelling it. Yes. Tarja Simonson. T E R J E. Once more. T E R J E. And then Simonson, like Simonson. S I M O N S E N. Not O N, but right. E N. Simonson. Yeah, that's yes, yeah, Simonson, and that it's also available. Uh, just recently, become available also as an audio book. Oh, that's wonderful. important. Yes, as a beautiful uh, guy, uh, Robbie Stevens, he's quite famous uh, uh, voiceover for both games and and uh, and uh, lots of vo given his voice to lots of books. Also, Robbie Stevens has read it. It's it's uh, uh, the audio book is fifteen hours. <laughs> <laughs> so it is, you know, it is. It's that your drive to work or your walk out yes. in nature or that luxury bath or even doing the chores you know it's listening to it then even if you are i have been in quarantine because of the pandemic you You're know right. and yes and if you are in lockdown we could be five, 15 good hours in lockdown i hope so yeah, exactly <laughs> mm -hmm. um allow a pause to absorb 
right? I always believe that. Pause to absorb because you can get overload. Um, have you written any other books? Yes, I have, but not available in English. I have written um, a couple of essays in other books. One is an introduction to the quite famous I and Thou by Jewish dialogue philosopher Martin Buber. And he had his, say, kind of inspiration from this Hasidic tradition, uh, which, again, is based on Kabbalah. Uh, so um, that's a very valuable book, I would say. And I have written in Norwegian uh, 55 pages of introduction to that book in a rather prestigious series here in Norway. Nice. And, and also have written about Rudolf Steiner, this uh, anthroposophy, uh, you know, with the uh, Waldorf school and uh, yes, uh, Austrian spiritual teacher. Um, so I've written about him and also written about some uh, esoteric text from antiquity, uh, the book, first book of Enoch. Uh, that's uh, kind of uh, with an other kind of uh, what is called uh, say different take on biblical themes in a way which was quite important for uh, branches of Christianity in antiquity but uh, were somehow discarded by the bishops uh, the Ethiopian Christians have had it all the time in their Bible but it was uh, uh, taken out of the western uh, canon yes. in, in antiquity so I tried somehow to reintroduce it um, Good. very ex exciting book so I've written uh, 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 yeah Yes, and I also written some uh, different kind of articles and that kind of stuff. So, but I would say that this book here is my uh, opus. Oh, maybe this uh, a short history, really everything there normally is my main work. Yeah, wonderful. Mm. And you don't have a website, but people can get hold of you through Twitter and Facebook. So, what? How do they do that? What? <laughs> well, uh, the book has uh, uh, on Facebook. There is a. Uh, page for the book on Facebook. So if they just search the title of the book, uh, again, a short history of nearly everything paranormal, they will find it on Facebook. And also, if they search the book on Amazon, I have an author's page on Amazon so that I can uh, read a little about my... Yes. And you also have a Facebook thing under your name. but I do that, but that's a, that's a more private thing so for local people and, and my personal friends. So okay. it's, it's, it's the books page they... Right primarily should go to mm -hmm. well you know thank you thank you so much for the for this book it's uh, so many people do need it um yeah you know i can feel the awakeness you know and it and it's like they know oh i know there's something more but i'm, I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> lost i don't quite understand and, mm. and having this kind of book that just gives them all these different practical philosophies and you know it, it, when you read them one of them was going to stick out with you. It might be more than one. And it's like, ha, ah, I feel that. And don't forget to feel your knowledge. If we're mm. just thinking our knowledge, we're not always incorporating all our other beautiful um, intellectual spirits uh, um, mm. mind there. Um, we need to actually feel the knowledge for the mind to understand what it is it's seeing. So, you know, it's, it's a wonderful way when you're putting that toe in front of the other of mm. exploration. I don't know mm. about this world. I'm not sure what I need to open up to, but mm. by reading this, I can actually understand all those different beautiful structures and decide which one is the one that's going to speak to me and which mm. one I want to discover further. But it's that foundation that people need. Mm. It's, you know, Thank and, you. and yeah. understanding that, ah, I have an affinity with this. Now I understand what I'm feeling and, and now mm. I know which channel to explore further. That's very nice of you to say. Uh, it, it was very interesting. Also, I discussed once with an uh, old Norwegian lady. She's quite psychic and she's very intuitive, but not very intellectual, to put it that way. So she's intelligent, but not an academic at all. Not uh, me. No, no. <laughs> so, uh, but she was very happy after having spoken to me. And I asked, why are you so happy? And uh, <laughs> she said to me, uh, you have told me what I have been doing all my life without knowing it. Right. So she Yes. She, yes. So yes. That was clarity. So clarity. Yes. We're all yes. one clarity. Yes. <laughs> you know, we want so. to understand what it is we're feeling, why we're mm. here, what's the meaning of life. And if you've mm. got something that gives you a clarity that you're doing it all along. Or mm. this is how you feel, just step into it. Because as I said, the foundation in which to build on. If you mm. haven't got a foundation there, you don't know which structure to build. 
Mm. Right. No, so. th that's very, uh, yeah, I, I share that uh, uh, view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. And, you know, for sharing, for writing the book, for sharing with us here today. I'm very glad that book is out there. I'm most certainly going to be pushing it a lot out there because there's a lot of awakeners that just don't know where to go. Uh, and it's very much needed. And it's not just for the awakener, it's for the academics, it's for the spiritual people. We have to have a baseline understanding of all those philosophies out there, all those points of view, because otherwise we become too extreme. Mm. And again, back to balance. If we have an mm. understanding, this is the way you see it. I respect that. This is the way mm. I see it. Respect mm. that. What if we have a conversation and see what we have in common, den uh, common denominator here? Exactly. Well, I, I'm, I'm a very me space and time here to, to talk a bit about the themes and so thanks a lot for uh, <laughs> giving me the platform for oh, talking no, about it. It's uh, my pleasure, absolutely my pleasure. So thank you so much. And uh, to everyone else out there, remember, there is always an answer, there is always a solution. And he's given you a wonderful book of a navigation for you to help you discover what it is that you're needing to know. And when you do know it, then you'll know where to take it. So don't be afraid to explore. Until next time, folks, bye for now. We hope that you enjoyed the show. You will hear many, many shows here at selfdiscoverymedia.com. We have new shows for you out every week. Just find them on our podcast or, or what's new. If you feel that you have something to share that makes a difference in the lives of others, or you too feel that you could be a host, please contact me at info at selfdiscoverymedia.com and we will be glad to speak with you. Have a wonderful day.